Hello everybody, uh, this is Professor James Ormord and today we're going to be going over the selective reduction of vanillin acetate. Uh, so essentially what we're doing here is we're taking a look at the uh, mild reducing agent, sodium borohydride, and as you learn in lecture, uh, this stuff is uh, fairly weak compared to other things such as lithium aluminum hydride. So uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the chemistry here. Uh, so here we can see that if you have an uh, acid or an ester and you do a reduction, uh, the carbon that's part of the ester is going to gain a new bond to H. So we then get an aldehyde. Uh, and then if you uh, reduce it again, it then goes to two bonds to H on that carbon, meaning you know additional reduction. We get an alcohol now. Uh, it turns out, though, that we have a little bit of a barrier uh, in what kind of reagents we can use for uh, each of the different steps here. Uh, so, for example, if you're trying to, trying to do a reduction of an acid or ester, uh, that carbon is too oxidized to use sodium borohydride. It, that's too weak of a reagent. And you have to break, uh, break out the big guns, uh, lithium aluminum hydride, LAH. Uh, the, the thing, though, about LAH you need to think about, though, is that it does not actually just uh, reduce it to the aldehyde. It reduces it all the way down to the alcohol. Uh, we'll have to use other reagents to stop the aldehyde, which we cover later this semester. All right, so uh, here uh, you can see like a little overview of what we just talked about on uh, when, you, when you need to use LAH and when you need to use NABH4. Uh, this is more uh, applicable to stuff in lecture, uh, but I just wanted to point it out here. Because um, if, you, if you take a look at the actual compound we're reacting it with is uh, vanillin acetate. So, uh, you know, vanillin being the main constituent of, uh, or main uh, extract from vanilla bean, responsible for, for vanilla flavoring. Uh, keep in mind, though, that actual vanilla flavoring is more than just vanillin, uh, but vanillin acetate is actually one of them as well. Uh, but so basically, we have a no the normal vanillin uh, compound has an OH on it, where this one has the acetate. So we call it vanillin acetate. And then looking at the functional groups here, uh, we have an ester and an aldehyde in the same compound. So it works out where if we use sodium borohydride, we will selectively reduce the aldehyde and we'll maintain. Uh, the ester. And that's the basic uh, gist on how, uh, what's going on today. So uh, technique wise, it's really, uh, really similar to last week, just the, what chemicals we're actually putting in the flask is different. Uh, so we're going to be, you know, throwing all the chemicals in a round bottom, uh, using diethyl ether and ethanol in our solvents. Uh, you know, using NABH4, you got to be careful. Uh, I'll, you'll see more of the detail in the actual experiment here. It's going to give a quite a little bit of a breakdown. Um, Anyway, uh, after you add all your reagents, we're then going to you know, spot for TLC to track reaction progress, just like last time. And then we also have a quench with, uh, with this lab too. So we're going to be quenching the sodium borohydride before doing a separatory funnel workup, just like last time. So <laughs> yeah, technique-wise, it's all the same. Uh, the main difference, I think, in this lab, uh, besides the chemical we're using, is that at the end we're going to get an oil, so uh, we're probably not going to do a melting point on that one. Yeah, getting a multi-point is a little bit more difficult if you have to actually freeze it rather than just melt it. So, all right, uh, without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Professor Hammond uh, over there, and uh, we'll see how this works. First thing we're going to do in today's lab is weigh out our two reagents. First, the organic material, which is our limiting reagent, the vanillin acetate. We need approximately 0.8 grams. So so anything between 0 0.7 or 0 0.75 and 0 0.85 will be a, a valid amount. So let's tear this. And 0.8 grams. You can watch from the top if you want. Yep. Oh, this is a really lightweight crystal. Four. So approximately 0.8. Are you telling me you didn't get 0.8 in your first scoop on your first try? No, I, <laughs> I was going for 0.4 on my <laughs> 0.5. Okay, so we're within the range that I mentioned just a minute ago. We want to, so 0 0.8 to, let's close the doors. This is the number you're going to need for your calculations. Of your theoretical yield. So 0.821. I'm going to set this one to the side, and while we're at the scale, we're going to weigh out the sodium borohydride. And on this one, 
we need only about 0.2 grams approximately. If we go a little over, that'll be fine because it is the excess reagent. Did you take a zoom close up? Yep. So we're shooting for approximately 0.2 or a little bit higher. These ones are interesting pellets and they have huge static charges that causes them to jump all over the place. Oh, you can see them jumping. <laughs> yeah. They're like little... They're like little piff balls. I'll like say they're like crickets or something. Again, we don't need much. This is going to be our excess reagent. So that was 0.15. See if I can get some out without it jumping. It's jumping. It always jumps. <laughs> So, they're, just, they're just so excited they're jumping for joy <laughs> they want to react okay so our sodium borohydride mass record that okay and that'll be our excess uh, reagent so i'm going to leave the sodium borohydride on the scale so the first thing we have to do is dissolve so we're going to take our vanilla and acetate we're going to put it into our round bottom flask with the stir bar and ideally all of it transfers and then we're going to dissolve it with 10 milliliters of diethyl ether and 5 milliliters of ethanol the diethyl ether is ice cold just took it out of the fridge freezer so we're adding 10 milliliters the diethyl ether first and then I'll start the stirring bar and that should more or less dissolve it and then we're going to add we'll keep this one for the ether because we'll need it later and we'll have a new one Let's put these two together for the ethanol five milliliters of ethanol and this is 100 percent ethanol approximately five milliliters okay and while that's dissolving we're going to need to prepare our TLC plate so I want to point out that we should normally be doing this in a fume hood because we can smell everything yeah right now. but uh, <laughs> we're doing it out here we're, we're risking our lives here for the sake of the video <laughs> okay so time for the TLC plate we're going to make one like we did last lab except this time we only need three spots so first to obtain the plate okay um, so what I'm going to do on this plate and I'll just bring it right here so I'm going to draw my line about a centimeter across we're going to do starting material 30 minutes and then the purified product just to do some comparisons so let me write that down. Where's my paper towel? Hang on, let me get the phone. You want to watch me write this? I do. <laughs> okay, so first I, get, I draw that line about a centimeter across. And we want a starting material spot, a 30 minute spot, and the final product spot after purification. Okay, so. That being done, let's see how our dissolving's going. Okay, and just like last time, um, we're going to take a small sample of the liquid before we add anything else. We're gonna stop the stir. It looks like the crystals, yeah, are mostly dissolved. That's a good sign. Okay, gonna take one little and again, if you look at it, there's too much in here. So I'm going to first spot it off on a paper towel so there's less liquid inside my capillary tube. And then I will spot the first spot with a small spot. I'll show you on camera just for a second. It's already uh, gone away, but I made a nice little kind of white spot right there. The cool thing about this one, I can actually check it with the ultraviolet lamp because aromatics show up vividly on there we 
we go. So this is what it looks like without ultraviolet light. We shine a little ultraviolet light. You see that lovely purple spot? That's our starting material spot. Okay, so with that spot in place, we're now ready to add the reagent and start the timer. The reagent was our sodium boron hydride. Did you know you can identify real and fake teeth with that white too? <laughs> I didn't. I yeah. don't want to know this. Yeah, so it, it turns out that uh, porcelain does not respond to UV, but your regular teeth does. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. So your regular teeth will glow yeah. and your porcelain teeth will not? Yes. What if you have the new plastic polymer teeth? Hmm, that might. What, I wonder if they addressed that. <laughs> I don't know. It's just an interesting question. We're supposed to make a nice bath before we add it, just in case it blows up on us. So, talking about teeth, you distracted me. Sorry. No, it's fine. Okay. So you see, I'm going to keep it stirring. What I'm doing now is I'm raising an ice bath up around it to try to make sure we don't go too exothermic, especially with all these flammable compounds we just added in there. And we're supposed to add about a fourth of it at a time. So, and then wait two minutes, wait a minute, add another fourth. So I'm going to try to show you what I'm going to do. Basically, in my mind, I'm going to say, okay, that's about a fourth. So we're going to start with a fourth and put it in, and two minutes later, we'll put in the other fourth. And again, that's to try to keep it from going too fast of a heat reaction. And we're going to keep it cold and forth. So start the timer, give it about... All right, I don't know what my timer is, but we're going to guess it's been about 30 seconds. So we're going to now add another fourth of the sodium borohydride. Wait 30 more seconds. Okay, we're now going to add a third fourth. And then at the last one, in 30 more seconds, we'll add all the rest all at once. Okay, and again, that's just to try to give it a chance to dissolve. Uh, there's, because of the ethanol in there, there's a chance for exothermic reactions. And after I add this final force, so this is the last little bit. We're going to leave it in the ice bath stirring for another 15 minutes. So start the timer now and let's do some fast forwarding. Okay, it has been a little over 15 minutes since we added the sodium borohydride. The next step tells us to take the ice bath away and let it continue stirring for another uh, 15 to 30 minutes. And while it's paused for a second, I'm going to take it off, but you can see that the sodium borohydride is more or less still solid in the bottom. We're going to now let it warm up and with the ethanol it should dissolve more. So. Let's stir. Okay, timer goes now. How much longer this time? 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, it has now been 30 minutes since we added the, um, and we took away the ice bath. You'll see that the reaction has kind of gone cloudy. We're hoping it's completely finished. We now need to take our second TLC spot, so I'll take it right off the top liquid again. And I have plenty too much, so I'm going to spot it off on the towel first, and then spot our second spot and I'll show you that one on ultraviolet as well okay so we've done everybody can see we have our second spot on there good okay it's time for quenching to 
quench the hydride, you just need an acid. And normally, you start with dilute acid and work your way up to concentrated acid. But we're going to shortcut it today. Um, and we're going to just start straight off, straight off with concentrated acid. And one of the things that may happen is it might fizz over. So watch carefully, see if we lose anything. We're going to add just one drop at a time of the concentrated hydrochloric acid. And you see how violently that fizzed. That was trying to destroy the excess hydride. You see it's still fizzing. Well, well, we almost lost it there. Okay, we're going to let that stir for a minute before we add any more. Yeah, we don't want to lose our yield now that we've gone this far. Okay. Well, it looks like it's not fizzing as much as it was before. So we should... I'm going to do 20 more drops and we're going to call it good. And again, we're going to keep it stirring one more time really fast. And turn it back down. Yep, I don't see any more extra fizzing. So, actually we'll make it 10 more drops. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, we have more or less quenched all the sodium borohydride. I can stop stirring now because now our job is to try to collect our product as pure as possible from this mixture. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to let this stir for another minute. And what I'm going to do is set up the separatory funnel. I'm going to bring that into view. And we're going to transfer first with two water transfers followed by two ether transfers. Let me see how the separatory funnel looks. Okay, it's a little bit too tall. Um, we'll move this guy out of the way in just a second. Okay. So, I think we're done stirring. Don't feel any heat coming off. All good signs. Okay. So, let me adjust this equipment. We're going to move this out of the way. We want to be able to see what's going on. With the separatory funnel, so we're going to move that one into view. Okay, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we have our separatory funnel. We have our mixture here that we've been quenching with the concentrated acid and now we're going to try to very carefully transfer that and I'm going to try to avoid as much as possible having the magnetic stir bar drop in we're going to add a little bit of water I'm just going to double check make sure the foaming is done yep okay thing about sodium borohydride it stays acidic for a very long time in fact, it's still fizzing inside of this reaction. So as long as it's fizzing, I don't know if you guys can see that up close. Try to tip it down. There's a little bit of fizzing coming off. When I swirl it. Okay. Another thing that we're going to have to watch out for is the ether. Ether has the ability to boil just by touching it with your skin. So we're going to be extracting with the ether and that often creates huge pressures inside the separatory funnel. Not to mention the hydrogen gas we're creating with 
sodium borohydride. Oh, we're still quenching. We're going to quench inside the separatory funnel today. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see that, but we're having nice effervescence down here, which is good. Going to rinse my flask now two times with water. And then I'll rinse two times with uh, ether. Okay, see, all right. Looks like the bubbling is starting to die down. And all the solids have dissolved. We're just going to let that effervesce a little longer. Okay. Looks like Sprite. What's that? It looks like Sprite. <laughs> it tastes like it too. No, just kidding. <laughs> it does not taste like Sprite. Okay. So, while that's effervescing, I'm going to do a rinse with that ether in the round bottom. And you kind of see everything goes clear. Very similar to what happened last week when we rinse with the ethyl acetate. We're rinsing to try to ensure that all our organic molecules are actually out of this round bottom flask and into the separatory funnel. Okay, so I did two rinses of water. And there goes my, there goes my magnet. At least it didn't jump inside of there. So we're doing good. Okay, so two rinses of water, two rinses of diethyl ether. <coughs> And then we're instructed to add 10 more milliliters of diethyl ether on top. So I'm going to pour the diethyl ether right on top. Okay. It's now time for shaking and venting. Um, we should have Professor Amord show us the shaking part. No, I'm just kidding. After like last week. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Professor Moore has demonstrated shaking. Now, I'm going to be bluntly honest with you. Because of the bubbling going off, I'm not even going to shake. I'm just going to turn it over and immediately do, do one vent. Um, ether's too volatile, so a little shake, one vent. And I don't know if you could hear that, but it actually went just with that little shake. So now we're going to do a little bit, another little shake and quickly vent. And it hissed again. I can, I can hear it from here, so. You can hear the hissing? Yeah. There, it hissed again. Okay. It's very important that you vent because if not, the pressure keeps growing until it shoots it out your hand and you lose all your product in your hand. So, that was my last shaking. And we're going to look to see now if the two layers will separate. We still have plenty of bubbling going on. All right, can we see two layers? Okay. Yeah, I actually see three layers, so we have to wait till it goes to two. The bottom layer, we don't we want that's our aqueous layer the top layer they're shrinking together and when they're one layer we're going to then um, prepare to drain very carefully that bottom layer off okay it looks like it's separated into two layers so let's very carefully now drain off that bottom layer and I almost can't see it where is that bot where's that layer Two layers are practically colorless. I hope you can still see it. It's right there right now. It's moving its way down. We don't want to lose any of the organic, so go slow at the end. 
there we go we stopped it right before the end and now we're going to do a one wash with water and after we do this water wash we'll do a wash with brine okay so i have a water layer you got to do the shaking and venting again again cautious because it's the ether so the first time just tip it over and immediately vent looks like it's doing okay need to tighten this now i can shake and immediately vent Ooh, it fizzed <laughs> shake vent shake and vent and every time we vented you should have heard the hissing sound okay we're gonna let that separate how are our layers looking okay it looks like the layers separate right there um, it looks like you can see it on the screen just fine so we need to drain off the aqueous layer again nice and slow okay I drained off as much of the aqueous layer as I want last one is to do a wash with brine also known as saturated sodium chloride so we'll just pour a little bit in that's plenty and to spare and same thing as before very careful shaking with ether Turn it over, immediately vent. That wasn't too bad. Just a little hissing that time, that's good. And one more time. Okay, so this will be our final extraction, our final wash. And then we're going to transfer to our desiccating agent okay so where's our layers gotta find them okay it's right here again very good okay again we're gonna try to drain off just the aqueous and not lose any of the organic okay there we go so now we should have our product in this nice ether layer we're going to switch it all to this beaker and we're going to add a scoop of magnesium sulfate and just like I did last time I'm going to do two small rinses of ether inside this separatory funnel to try to make sure that I transfer all of my product. Okay, so I have some ether. Do one rinse, pour that in, second rinse. we'll pour that in okay so can we see this on the film actually it disappeared I was too low sorry guys I did all of that dumping in the beaker below screen so I'll just show you we now have in this beaker I'm gonna raise up the, the jack um, our product plus all the ether we use that hasn't evaporated away yet and we need to dry this mixture so we're going to add our scoop of magnesium sulfate and let it sit for about five minutes again with a watch glass on top I'm going to adjust the camera ever so slightly it'll be faster than what I'm doing okay so we have our product magnesium sulfate one scoop it's about a gram Actually, today I'm only going to go for 0.75 grams. So that was 0.75 grams. My watch glass. Where'd my watch glass go? The watch glass goes on top, and then we just let it sit. 
And while we're letting it sit, though, we can do our final spot for the TLC and start the TLC. Okay, so this should be our pure product should be in here. And hopefully just our pure product. And we knew, we've quenched all the leftover reagents, everything there. So I'm going to take one last spot of this ether mixture and do our third spot on the product and then we'll check it under ultraviolet light again just to make sure it's there okay so how does it look? It looks like we have three spots everybody see that in the ultraviolet light? excellent okay so the looting chamber today we're going to use is 25% ethyl acetate in 75% hexane. We'll set that in there and let that begin to elute. And then after it goes a certain height, we'll be able to measure our F values and do that. Okay, so we're just going to let this sit for five minutes, guys. We're going to collect our final product of the vanyl alcohol in this beaker. And it's going to probably be an oil when we're done. So we're going to need to pre-weigh this beaker and then we'll weigh the product afterwards. So let's, you'll need to record this in your notebook. The weight of the empty beaker. Everybody record that? There we go. Okay. Now we're going to very carefully decant our product and ether into this pre weighed beaker. So, gentle swirl. Going to decant just down the side. Uh, don't want any of the white solid. Okay, that's about all we're going to do. We will lose a little bit of product in there, but we're not going to risk it because we want ultra pure product. Now, ether boils away nearly instantly, and all you need is a barely warm hot plate, and I mean barely, about the same temperature as your skin. So I have no idea. <laughs> I don't want the same mistake we had last week. It was all Professor Morse's fault. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, we kind of boiled over last week. That's, that's all you. <laughs> so, we're trying to set it up our time lapse on this one. Um, yeah, this one should take about five to ten minutes. All right, let me just set this up. Yeah, here. we're gonna set it up and watch it carefully. And we won't do it today. Okay. We boiled off nearly all the yeast. There's still a little bit left. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the temperature to about 150 now on the dial. Um, like hopefully you can see that. And what will happen is, is our product will turn into a pale yellow oil if all goes well. It's so close to being pure product right now. Um, we want to try to capture that last stage when it kind of goes gooey and the last of the ether goes mmm starting to smell good so not much ether smell left but I don't know if you can see but there's still a little bit of liquid in there you guys see that a little bit that's the product mostly there's sadly still a little bit of ether inside okay so when I'm satisfied with the smell and it smells like vanilla bean ice cream, then we're going to go weigh our final product. But it's not quite there yet. And after that, we're going to take a sample of this and run an IR of it to test for, um, see what we see in the IR. Oh, there I see some bubbling still. OK. I'm also going to add some heat gun to it. Just 
so we can see a little clearer. Okay, you see the little droplets and the oils forming on the bottom? That's it, that's our product. Not almost there. Oh, it's smelling really good. Sorry, I can't transfer the smell over the airways. Okay, I'm going to look down in. See that little droplets of oil? There's still a tiny bit of ether left. Okay, so we're almost there. But, and once we decide we're there, we're going to go weigh our final yield. So everybody see inside? See that little droplet at the bottom? All that work. All that work. Well, <laughs> what was our goal? was about 800 milligrams. So it's not even a gram of material was our goal. We'll see what we obtain, but it looks like we're basically done. Again, one more time. Oh, it smells really good. I don't smell ether anymore. We are going to stop it here and do our final weighing. I want to smell. Go ahead, you can smell. Come on. Well, it smells good. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. Okay, so it looks like we made a nice smelling product. Um, we have enough here to do an IR and plus obtain a yield. Um, you see it's kind of an oil looking liquid. So let's Remember, get your yield first before you start doing the IR, right? Right. <laughs> okay, this is our oil, our vanilla alcohol. We're going to weigh it directly. I tried to cool it off as fast as I can. Um, it's still a little bit warm, which means the temperatures should go up a little bit. But the weight should be slightly bigger than when it was empty. I don't remember the weight when it was empty. Okay. Well, it's, it's our job to figure it out. Okay, you got, you have it down? Yep. Okay, it's time to take an IR. Let's take an IR of this. Okay, so we only need a tiny smear of our oil on the plate. And you're saying, well, you only have a tiny smear, and you'd be right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a capway tube and go from the top, look down. See, I'm going to just kind of goop some up, and then transfer that gently onto the IR plate, more or less in the middle. And it went inside my tube. What's it doing that for? <laughs> I need a closed-in one. That's okay. It'll work this time. So, again, same thing. You see, I got a little drop here. That's plenty for an IR that's sitting there on this plate. So we will now sandwich that between two plates and go to our IR and run a spectrum. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's go. So we put the, our sample there on the holder just to show you that we do have a laser beam going through. You'll see a little red dot on my finger. That's because there's a laser going through. We're now going over to the computer. Wake up, computer. I had you all set up. Okay. So we're going to collect the sample. All right, zeroed out the background. Okay. It's going to run through eight scans here, and then it'll uh, transfer that onto the spectrum. And if we have it too thick, I will click cancel and we'll do it again but if it comes out perfect we will oh there it goes it's going it has to warm up so it's... so now that we've done the eight scans it'll ask us to accept it we are going to accept the window we're going to now ask it to find peaks and you can put this bar wherever you want but I want it right about I want to include you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to get those guys I want to get... no those don't show up those are your main ones. But I do want to get the aromatics over here, so I want that one. The carbonyl peak, fingerprint region or aromatics, and our lovely... So look, look at that signal. So is that, a, is that the aldehyde or ester, do you think? I'm going to click replace, and then I can print a copy of this. And we are done here.
students, we are going to now measure the um, uh, the different RFs for our spots. The first measurement we need is the length of the solvent front. So if you look here, I marked it, put this on the zero line, and where it meets up here, it sits at approximately just below 6.9. So if I was estimating, I'd say 6.88 would be my centimeters that it went up there. Okay, we're now going to look at the starting material. So again, I'm going to start right at the zero line. We're going to go right to the center of the spot. Looks like it almost landed exactly on a 3.0. I'm going to put a smidgen above, so 3.01 centimeters uh, for the starting material spot. At the 30 minutes, we had mostly product. So again, I'm going to start my zero line. This time it comes in just under one. So that's 0 0.98 is my estimation right there. We also had a little bit of starting material, it looks like. And that one comes in just under three, about 2.91 centimeters. That's my estimation there. And we're not gonna do the mystery spot, or maybe I'll go back. The final product spot, uh, again, came in almost exactly on the one just a smidgen under. So I will say 0 0.99 on that spot. And if we do the mystery spot, which isn't in the row like the other one, um, hold on, I need to put a center spot on. So the center of the mystery spot, I'm not even sure where it came from. I'm pretty sure it's a splatter. It lands at 2.75, and that's our spot. 